Hi everyone, I'm gonna do another video and this I'm doing this kind of boring video because people are a little confused by a video I just did about parasites. So to do that, let's go to this. This is a bubblegum video about basic parasite solutions in math. So let's go over a little bit of basic math. This is, um, I can't even spell, you see that bubby? <laughs> Okay, that's what we're, so bubblegum video means there is no, no thought other than me just putting on my phone, yakking away. Okay, so a couple of the problems right off the bat. For snake doses, a lot of times snake doses, or reptile doses, excuse me, are in kilograms, and kilograms is essentially just, uh, just a, a metric that we're using in a lot of like, you know, our, our textbooks and stuff like that. So one pound divided by 2.2 will convert a pound weight to a kilogram weight. And let's make sure we know this. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So essentially one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. 2.2 pounds equals 1,000 grams. So roughly about 1.1 pounds equals 500 grams. Okay, so let's say we are dealing with basic parasites. So we look at uh, parasites and reptiles. So we have a lot of things like roundworms, ascarids, nematodes, all this different nasty stuff. And what they do is these are typically parasites that will generally live in the gastrointestinal system. Of course, there are parasites that go into uh, internal organs, they destroy internal organs, they can live in body cavities. You get a pentastoma worms that can live in the lungs. Pentastoma worms are very, very tricky, very, very nasty, and typically uh, associated with tropical Asia. Uh, just, it's a hideous, hideous parasite that often um, exists as an adult in the lungs of a reptile and it completes its life cycle there. Uh, where it breeds, lays eggs. I don't even know if it even breeds. It might be self-proliferating, I don't know. But uh, they would lay eggs and then the eggs are then coughed up out of the lungs and then ingested by that poor animal. So, things like parasites and reptiles, nematodes, ascaris, roundworms, pinworms, microfilaria, just general, general parasites. Uh, a good way to treat it is with this guy. This is fendibendazole, so that is Panicare. So see this? Okay, let's give you some real math. So let's say we have uh, a boa constrictor, weighs 2.7 pounds. And this snake, maybe it's been giving you problems, not gaining weight. You might've seen something in its poop, like a long, nasty worm, something that's slowly moving. Well, generally those are round worms, so nematodes, Round worms, ascarids, hookworms, all that nasty stuff. So, the dose on this, for this, is 100 milligram per kilogram. So, snake weighs 2.7 pounds. I convert 2.7 pounds to kilograms. So, pounds divided by 2.2 equals kilograms, which is X. X times 100 milligram per kilogram. That's the dosage in this case, and we take, we want to know what Y is. So Y equals 122.7, then we divide it. So we have, so just so you know, we went along here, we got 122.7, and now we need to divide it by the solution concentration, which means how many milligrams of the wormer exist per cc per ml. So a cc and an ml are the same, a milliliter. And Z is my final dosage. So we're gonna go 122 divided by how much of this exists. There we go, right there, you can see it. Let me see if I can get this right dead center. You'll see there is 100 milligram per ml. So that means 100 milligram per cc. So we take the 122, divide it by 100, and that's gonna equal Z. So Z is gonna be our dose. 
So 1.2 ml is the dosage. And we can do, do this safely, orally treating it so we would get a, a syringe and maybe a, a French catheter or something like that, like a tube, to get it down past the mouth of the animal, down the throat a little ways. And we add some water so we can take our dilution. So we can take a 1.2 ml uh, of, of this and we wanna make sure we, we just shake that up really, really well because it will just settle at the bottom. And then you can add some water. So let's say I draw out uh, 1.2 of Panicure and then uh, 0.8 of just water. And we're gonna tube that down the snake. We can treat this every seven days. So we can treat it once. So if we treat it, you know, Wednesday, then next Wednesday, and then maybe we'll do three consecutive doses spanned out a week apart, and then maybe wait a month and just do one for the heck of it. This stuff is uh, not terrible tasting. I've certainly drank it before just checking it out. And uh, it's, it's not horrible. So it's pretty safe. And the, the trick with this thing is it prevents the parasite from picking up sugars which essentially starves the parasite and causes the animal to start shedding the parasite and the parasite just starts to die off. Okay, let's go to something a little bit more involved. Now let's say we have things like pinworms, ascarids, hookworms. Then we also have nasty tapeworms and trematodes. Well, I can't treat this whole pile of worms with just panicure. I need something a little bit heavier. And the heavier, if I wanna treat this stuff, plus I also wanna cover tapeworms and flukes, I'm going to use maybe that. And these are all common wormers that are you know, pretty much destined for uh, agriculture, livestock uh, stores. And this is for treating things like goats and sheep and cattle and horses and all that. So what's really good about this, this is like having uh, Panicure plus Dronset. So we use Dronset. Dronset is, um, is a wormer that will treat cestodes and flukes. So tapeworms, trematodes, and Dronset tastes horrible, uh, but it's, it's really nasty. I think what it does is it removes the, shaxi, uh, the waxy, I can't speak, the waxy sheath of uh, the tapeworm that's living in the gastrointestinal system and then the, the parasite lets go of its bite position in the gastrointestinal system and then gets cast out and you'll often treat the animal and you can find some, if it has tapeworms indeed, you can find them in the poop as like long pieces of ribbon. They're, they're segmented. Okay, let's do a dose. So let's say I'm treating a Kribo. Kribos are heavily, heavily parasitized when they come in as imports. So let's say the Kribo weighs 3.6 pounds. So I take my pounds, divide by 2.2 to get my kilogram because we're gonna be dosing, the, the dose is in kilograms generally. So we take that 1.63, we multiply it by my dose. So how many milligrams per kilogram is my target, and in this case, it's 50 milligrams. This is a conservative uh, dose because we, you know, you can kill an animal uh, by overdosing because obviously we're we're poisoning the animal enough to poison the worms, but not to kill the animal, and we don't want to, you know, hurt it. So we get 81.8, and then we are going to divide that by the dilution. Let's see if my camera can get this. 113.6. So the dilution, and that's gonna equal 0.72 cc's or ml, and we're gonna give this orally, and we're gonna follow the same, same thing. We're gonna shake it, we're gonna treat it once, seven days later, seven days later, seven days later, maybe wait a month. And what we're doing by all these uh, time spaces, we're trying to interrupt the life cycle of these worms because you can treat the immature worms and the adult worms, but generally when you treat these animals, uh, they it doesn't have much effect on the eggs. I'm not even gonna talk about ivermectin in this because ivermectin can be tricky. Let's do the last one. Let's look at metronidazole, which is flagell. This is a serious, serious weapon when we're keeping reptiles because many reptiles suffer from protozoa 
uh, amoeba infections, and generally we see it by regurgitation, uh, failure to thrive, uh, skinny. But another thing we see is we see the animal will get like, let's say we have a ball python, and it's all puffy, and maybe it's gassy. And you're like, oh my God, my ball python is pregnant. Look at it, it's giant, and it's a boy. So in that case, we, we potentially have something wrong. And what that generally is, that's anaerobic bacteria that lives in the lower gastrointestinal system, which is often uh, like knitted together with uh, flagellates, uh, protozoa amoeba. And what happens is when we have an animal that has a protozoan infection, it causes these micro lesions in the gastrointestinal system, which leads to all sorts of issues. So it makes the animal, uh, when it tries to eat, the stomach acid will burn uh, into these little uh, lesions and maybe the animal will throw up or it gets diarrhea and all these different things. So these are all different things that can be a problem. So we can treat this animal. And if we see it really puffy, that's a, such a telltale sign because that puffy thing, protozoa and anaerobic bacteria seem to go hand in hand. And you treat it and within like three or four days, you see the, the gassy animal go away. So our dose, let's do a ball python, okay? So that dose would be 125 milligram per kilogram. That is not the same dose we would give a king snake, an animal with a much faster metabolism. So let's say the snake weighs, I'm gonna do this one as grams. So 473 grams is actually 0.473 kilograms. Remember, 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. So it's 0.473 kilograms. So the 0.473 dose we're gonna get is 0.473 kilograms times my dose, 125 milligram per kilogram. And that's going to equal 59 milligrams. And we can uh, put that into a water solution. We can do it orally. This right here is a 500 milligram tablet. So if I cut it in half, it's 250. I cut it again in half. Again, it's 125 and so on. And I can just kind of eyeball that. It's, you know, you can get away with kind of roughing it up. But that would be 59 milligrams, you can do it once, you can do it seven days later, and maybe seven days later, and often that is wonderful. You can also find this online as fish zol. Look online because we're using it to treat uh, Malawi blout and different um, microbial problems in fish. If we were doing a colubrid, so we're doing a king snake or a corn snake that is throwing up everything. We're gonna do a smaller dosage, which is only 75 milligram versus the 125 for python or boa because they have a faster metabolism and things are uh, happen way quicker and we do not want to poison the animal. Okay guys, how's that for a no frills bubble gum video? Please, as always, let's see your, uh, your comments. And I'm doing this for you guys, so I really need to see that you guys actually want these because I have better things to do like chewing bubblegum. Bye, guys.